Hey everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today is Thursday, April 23rd, 2020, and I want to talk to you about the last chance list. It's the Stampin' Up! Retirement list, and it was released yesterday. So if you go to my website, amicowesterfield.stampinup.net, you can click on shop, and then there should be a tab for um, last chance, uh, or it might say retirement items, and you click on there and it'll pull up what is available. Now, some of the things on the retirement list, as it sells out, then it's discontinued. You cannot get it anymore. They will not, they will not be ordering any more in. Once it's gone, it is gone. So if there's anything you really want, make sure you order it. A couple notes for my scrapbookers, they are we are no longer carrying 12 by 12 scrapbooks or page protectors. So if that is the method of scrapbooking you enjoy, I would stock up on those. You will notice that the stamp and blends are on the list. We are not actually retiring the stamp and blends. Currently, they're offered in two packs, light and dark combos, as well as you can buy the individual, either a light or dark of each color. So we're doing away with the single offerings of that. Instead, they will all come in two packs, with the exception of the color lifter, the ivory, and the bronze. Um, and I, I don't know if their numbers are changing or not, but they are in the new catalog. We will no longer be carrying the 2018-2020 in-color ones, which are the Pineapple Punch, the Call Me Clover, or the Lovely Lipstick. And those are some great colors. So this is the Pineapple Punch, the Call Me Clover. It's a true green, like a Kelly green or a Christmas green. And this is the Lovely Lipstick, which is a great hot pink. So if you're going to get any blends and you want the whole collection, I would recommend picking up those before they're gone. Um, in colors, they're going, so I've talked about this a lot this month. Blueberry Bushel is a true royal blue, so for Let's Go Blues or some of the school's colors, that is the color you want to pick up. I recommend getting the pad, the ink pad and the refill so that you can, you know, re, um, freshen it up if it starts to get dry, which doesn't usually happen for a while, but it would be a shame for you not to have the option of that. And I would pick up the cardstock also. There's some fun ribbon you might want to get, but I mean, th that's something for sure I would get is the cardstocks. And the same thing with the Call Me Clover, being that it's a true Kelly green, that'll be another color you want. And this features all the in colors that are going. So these are all, all retiring. All right. Now, I usually do a hostess code each month. And so... And it's one hostess code and you get a ticket for the drawing for every $25 you order for being a paper pumpkin subscriber, for attending any of my classes. And that counts as far as virtual classes go for hosting a workshop, for joining any clubs. So like I might have a product club, like a marker club or a ribbon club. So um, anything like that you get points for, for bringing a friend to an event. And that also includes my virtual events. So if someone signs up and they're your recommendation, You'll get your name in the drawing and you also get a pick from my goodie basket so that i haven't figured out i guess when we can see each other again you can pick or you can let me pick and that's the goodie basket is just a little small thing um the drawing the monthly drawing is usually something like um the basic rhinestones or some people will pick uh i don't know sometimes I'll, occasionally i'll have a stamp set in there to pick but it's usually something around the four to eight dollar price range but for april april's is going to be fabulous so the beginning part of april we had a different hostess code and i had to put close that workshop and put that order in to make sure people got their retirement stuff yesterday so i'm starting a new hostess code today which is tycab36n and this is the hostess code you want to pick so that you can't when you enter your order it'll ask if you have a hostess code and then that's how you get entered in my drawings um, the, the first drawing I'm doing will be, uh, the bigger prize for April because I was talking about a big April prize. So this is, this is going to be a, a pretty nice prize. And then the second prize will be fun too, a lot of fun, but maybe not as big as the first prize. I will do those drawings, both of those drawings next Friday, April, uh, May 1st at one o'clock at my, um, live zoom class for the joy of giving gift tag class that I'm having. And if you want to get in on that class, the um, it was a $35 kit that is on the clearance rack for only $14. And you just need to get that and either a snail adhesive or a snail refill. 
and then that's how you qualify for the class. Um, I, I, you need to order it today though, otherwise you won't get it in time for next Friday's um, class. So be sure and take care of that. And then I will add you to that private Zoom class. All right, so I'm gonna talk about the retirement list. Retirement list is, is, is exciting, but it's also, you know, you get bummed whenever your favorite product is going away. Oh, another thing, snail adhesive, that is retiring, but they're coming out with a different adhesive um, for the new catalog. So it's not like we won't carry adhesives anymore. But if you don't want to order the snail adhesive, backtracking a little bit on the project kit, if you already have plenty of adhesive, you can order a pack of the basic rhinestones or the basic pearls, something like that, or just add something else to your order. And I'll count it like that. All right. This, I'm going to put the camera down, this is one of my favorite sets, favorite, favorite sets. Now, I love to color, so I'm going to be doing a series of coloring videos. So some of you might be bored with it and be like, oh, this is dumb, and that's okay. Cool thing is you can fast forward it or not watch it. This is probably one of my top 10 favorite sets of all time, and I've been a Stampin' Up! customer and demonstrator for a very long time. This set is called Beautiful You, and it's, it comes in two different... Um, boxes because these are the the rubber stamps so that's the first one and the second one looks like this oops as I break the case all right this set is just incredible I can't tell you how much I love this set so even if you're like eh, on the images which I love the images but that's a different story the greetings are great as well they say so happy for you life may not be the party we had hoped for but while we are here here, we might as well dance. Live with passion, laugh out loud, love deeply, celebrate, life looks beautiful on you, wishing you birthday days, sorry, wishing you brighter days to come. And then this is the happy birthday, gorgeous and in style. These are cool because you can add just like a color swatch behind them. So if you don't want to color, you could just flip it and just like stamp and do that as a black and white image or you can color them in. We're, I'm gonna show you how to color them in using the blends, but here's the images stamped on our thick Whisper White cardstock, which I absolutely adore. So that's the first set. And this set here is great for scrapbooks too. Like sometimes the, the sayings in our stamp sets are very card specific, but these can be used for cards and some of them definitely can be used on your birthday, or not birthday, but on your scrapbook pages. All right, the second set, which is very similar, is Wonderful Moments, and this one's also retiring. Oh, I love this set too. So this is the Photo Polymar, which is the clear stamps. I know you see the black on there, but whenever you take off this, the stamp itself is clear, okay? Um, and you wanna keep the sheets to attach them to. So this is a great set as well. This one here, it has a bride, it has an expectant mother, and has a lady with her hand up, kind of sassy. And you can stamp her like that, or you can have her carrying the gift bag, or the balloons, or the flowers. Pretty cool. There's also a confetti stamp in here, and like this little swirly streamer stamp, which you could also do on the balloon if you wanted. Now the sayings on this one, this one says, she said yes, for the bride, dreams come true. The really good thing about you is you bring out the good in me, Looking forward to meeting your new little miracle. Fashionably late, hope it was great. I'll be your up when you're feeling down. Happy birthday. The little things you do make the world a whole lot better. Thanks so much. I think I said for the bride. Congratulations and best wishes for a future filled with love and happiness. Celebrating a special day with a special wish for a special person. So. These are great, great stamp sets for your girlfriends. Like if, if you ever need to make a card in a pinch or a cute gift, this is a great set for that. I have got to add though, that a lot of the sayings work well for not just female specific cards, but they can work for different kinds of occasions and couples and things like that. So I'm gonna put these like this. Now those two sets are retiring. I, I just think everyone should own them, but that's just me. I'm gonna lay these out. I pre-stamped um, the images on the Thick Whisper White, like I said. Move my little hostess thing out of the way. And then there's these. Now the next stamp set I'm gonna show you is not retiring, but I just want you to, sh I just wanna show you how well it coordinates 
with these two sets so that if it's something you like, if it's images you like to do or you like to color, you really should consider picking up those two sets. This set is a good man and it will be in the new catalog. It is the red rubber and it's the cling so it's got the sticky back on it which is good. The older stamp sets used to not come like that. It's got the three images which I'll show you in a moment plus a heart and it says you do a great job of being a great guy. Relax your way. Thanks to you. I grew up loved. You're the best. It's your day. Being a good dad starts with being a good man and for you. And again, not all of the sayings are specific for, um, for, for guys. You can use some of these definitely for different, different applications. Now these images look like this. Don't those look amazing with these? I mean, can you just even imagine a scrapbook page where you combine some of them? I'm like, this one here is like a daddy looks like holding a little girl maybe, and then maybe a wedding day picture or something, you know, like on the page from when she was a little girl to her wedding day. I mean, there's so many cool things you could do. So since this set does not retire, although, I mean, you want to buy it now, that's great. Father's Day is coming up. But I really, really strongly recommend if you like these, you need to pick these sets up because once they're gone, I can't get them for you anymore. All right, I'm going to put these away. Oh, I want to mention this. Okay, so something I do, which may or may not help you, I take sometimes, whenever I'm on my A game, I will take cardstock. And so this was two pieces of 8.5 by 11 inch thick ultra, uh, whisper white cardstock. And I cut it into eight pieces each. So I have 16 cards this size, right? And, um, and when I cut my cardstock, I, I know this sounds, I don't mean like that you're stupid or anything, but let's say this is the cardstock. I cut it in half at five and a half inches, and then I cut each piece at four and a quarter inches, and then I go back in, and to make these pieces up, I cut it at two and three quarter inches. And that's how I get my eight pieces, and I do it all at once. There are times where I will just stamp a bunch of cards and images. So like on this one, I use this flower, which is from the Timeless Tropics, which is also rolling over into the new catalog and I'll stamp images on it, and I'll just sit like when you're watching, I call it stupid TV, like TV you're kind of interested in, but you don't have to be glued to it to pay attention, and I'll color a bunch of, of different things, and then I'll put them in a pile, and I have them ready to go when I need to put together a quick card, but maybe don't have time to sit down and color and make it as fabulous as I want. So I'm gonna stack these up here, and I'm gonna show you these cards I made quite a while ago. Now I made these as a reference card to show the different coloring um, ways our coloring products work. And these first three cards I'm showing you were done on our watercolor paper. The watercolor paper is amazing. It's like an artist quality watercolor paper. It is to be used with coloring mediums that are either completely dry or are water based. So you do not use the watercolor paper with our Stampin' Blends because they're alcohol based or our, uh, um, we have these little, um, they look kind of like a clear marker but they're, they're wet and they're called a blender pen that you can use to mix stuff. You don't want to use that on the watercolor paper because it just dries that bad boy up really fast. All right, and the markers um, that I used on here, you can use these also. They, it absorbs it differently than a different paper though, and I'll show you the comparison. So this one's with our Aqua Painter, and you will notice on the retirement list, the Aqua Painter is retiring, but they're coming out with a new product that's similar but better. Um, I got to look at it, and it, it looks like it's gonna be pretty amazing. This is done with ink, and you can either take like your Stampin' Inker and drop a little bit in a little lid and use that, or you can squeeze your ink pads gently you don't want to crack the ink pads and then it'll get some ink up in there in the lid and then you can use it and lift it out and color with it that way so that's what i did with the aqua painter this is just with our many marvelous markers so our markers look like this and these are water-based marker so they have a brush tip and they have a fine tip and these come in they're sold in family colors so i can get the set of brights or the set of settles or you can buy the entire um, collection of them and they come in a carrying case. I will be in June starting a uh, Many Marvelous Markers Club and it's a, <coughs> a, a club where you end up with all the markers plus one month you get hostess benefits. So watch for that. This is colored with those markers on the watercolor paper 
And this one is the Aqua Painter with our watercolor pencils, which I love watercolor pencils. They make my heart happy. They're just so cool. It makes me feel like I'm a real artist. This is on our Whisper White. So this was done with the watercolor pencils using the Wink of Stella. So the Wink of Stella is this little brush tip and it's wet and it has sparkle in it. I don't think you can see the sparkle on this video, but that's okay. Trust me, it sparkles. This is the blender pen with the ink. So how I showed you how I squeezed the lid of my stamp pad. This is with the marker. It's nice and vibrant. That's with our Mini Marvelous markers. And this is with the blender pen with our colored pencils. Now something I do want to show you is the difference on the marker on the watercolor paper versus the uh, Whisper White. Can, I don't know if you can kind of see, see the difference there. It's just a little bit more, there's a little bit more bleed with it on the watercolor paper. And it's more precise on the Whisper White. Now, you will notice that I do not have any samples of this done with our um, Stampin' Blends. And that's because at the time I made those project cards, we did not have the blends. And then I'll be honest with you, life happened and I just kind of, you know, didn't get to it. So I'm going to color this image now. And I'll probably be making a whole new set of, of these cards using whatever new fabulous set we have. Maybe I'll do it with that guy's set. All right, so each of the blends come in, that's the ivory, put that guy aside. Um, so I, this is dark petal pink and light petal pink. So I'm gonna start with these. And you want to use them in conjunction with each other. So alcohol markers, if you're not familiar with them, are markers that many of the comic book artists use because uh, the water, the regular markers, I can't blend that at all. I, it, the color is very vibrant. It is what it is. I can't make it like shades of lighter or darker. And if I try to mix them together, it has a very, like you can see the line, distinct line. This, this thing is called a color lifter and it looks like it's just a clear, but what it does is it absorbs some of the ink and lifts it off. So if you make a little mistake, you can, you may not be able to lift it all off, but you can lift some of it. But what it's predominantly used for is doing highlights on projects. So when you color, it is always a good idea to start light to dark um, so that your lighter colors don't get ruined picking up on, on some of the darker stuff around it. So I'm gonna start for this, this girl's skin color because I'm trying to match it as close to these cards as possible. And I'm gonna do the dark petal pink and it's the darker color so I just kind of go where her skin is just around the edges of it just a skosh. All right, and then I'm going to go back in and I'm using the bullet side on this because it's a smaller area. I'm going to actually color back over what I just colored with the lighter and that blends the two colors together. And this is real subtle. So on this one, you're going to be like, eh, whatever. I can't see, right? And that's okay. Now this is the ivory. So if I want to change this up just a skosh, I can add the ivory in there too. The skin color. All right, and I do like the ivory, it gives you some options for it. And there's also like a bronze color, a bronzer we have. So if you wanna go with like a darker complexion, you can do that. There's a lot of my um, scrapbook pages when we were in Japan and on the beach and, and I had quite the tan. And so those, if I was doing an image, I might do darker like my tan line is, tan was. All right, now I'm gonna do the yellow next. So I have not played with the blends on here. There's a lot, a lot of different yellow, like yellowy colors. You can do the two like we just did with um, the light petal pink and the dark petal pink, but I'm going to kind of show you how to play around with different colors to get a diff to get a more um, vibrant effect. So right here, I am going to be using the dark and light mango me melody as well as the retiring dark pineapple punch and light pineapple punch. Now I just want to show you real quick on here what this looks like if I just color this. This is the dark color. Oh, actually, that's pretty good. Um, sorry. And then this is the light color next to it. So it's really subtle, the two colors, right? And then this is what the, the mango looks like. Oh yeah, I do like that. Oh, this is going to be fun to play with. And this is what the light looks like. Now you wouldn't actually color it like this. I'm going to color over all this to show you. Oh, I did it backwards. So this is dark and light of the pineapple, and this is dark and light of the mango. What I'm doing is I'm going to take the dark mango melody and I'm going to go around the edges of the umbrella. Now these alcohol markers bleed, so you do not actually have to go 
all the way to the edge of your um, of your lined image, unless there's a pretty wide line. So that, you see how I went all the way around the edge with that? Now I'm gonna take the Light Mango Melody, and I'm gonna go, and I'm using the brush tip for this, and I'm going to go over the, um, the dark, I'm sorry, apparently I can't color and talk, the dark Mango Melody, and blend it there. And it's real subtle, like you're gonna be like, you can't tell the difference, but when you get done with the final product, you can. Then this is the dark um, pineapple punch. Again, you're gonna go over everything you just colored, and I like doing little circular motions, and I'm pulling the color in from dark into the middle, okay? So I'm pulling it in. And the reason why you do this is so that you don't have distinct lines. Remember the makeup lines with the foundation? We don't wanna have that with our coloring, okay? So we're blending it there. Now I take the lightest color and I literally go over everything with this. Oh, dog's hairs. And doggos and their hairs, I swear they get on everything. They're sweet though. All right. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay. So I'm gonna pop this up here. Do you see how that has like shadows and stuff? So it's, it's not flat, it's more dimension than the one with the markers. Don't get me wrong, the marker one's pretty, but the blends have just this totally different contrast on them. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do her skirt, and I love the Cherry Cobbler because it's really dark and vibrant, and for her skirt on this, I'm gonna use the Cherry Cobbler and the Real Red. And now again, if you're just starting your collection, just get um, one of the, I recommend starting, if you can, to start with reds, a, a good yellow set, a good green set, a good blue set, um, and then orange, if you can, and then gray, and purple, I love purple, but if you have to limit yourself, and then a lighter, like the lighter pink, or the ivory, so you can do some skin tones and the color lifter. And you need the memento pad, on the memento pad, that right now, that you cannot order it, they're, they're getting more in stock, but if you order the blends, I will um, order, I will send you a stamp and spot inked up with the Memento ink in the meantime. And then once the other ones come in, they can be ordered. And I will give you free ship, uh, free shipping to me on those. If you're having them shipped to your house, you'll have to pay the shipping because it'll be a little different cost. But um, free shipping to me on, on those. And then if you're in the St. Louis area, and then I can drop them off. All right, so, and that is just on the Memento ink. On the reds, I'm gonna start with the Dark Cherry Cobbler, oh my gosh, which I love. And I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna bullet point this one. So I'm using the bullet point and I went on the edge and anywhere there's a line like in the pleat of her skirt. So this one I'm doing a little bit different and I'm gonna go on the outside of that, her waistline. And on the bottom, I don't go all the way down to it because I don't want to, I don't want to get bleed into her leg. Okay. Then I'm going to take the light cherry cobbler and I'm going to use the brush tip. Oh, I should probably order this one as a single because I've used this one a lot. And I'm going to just go over that edge into the middle a little while. Then I'm going to take the dark real red and I'm going to go over all of that to really start making this pop. And I'm using the brush um, applicator on this part, but I might need to change it up. Oh, I think I just messed that up, but that's okay. It's all right. We'll pretend like it's perfect. All right. Uh, I think I need a lift in there. And then I'm gonna take the light red. This is light, real red. Again, on the lighter color, you go over the whole area. And that, and right here, it kind of looks like a water spot. So I wanna blend those edges away to make them so it doesn't just look like someone spilt something on there and stained her pretty red dress. Now, I'm gonna show you the color lifter real quick because I did mess up. All right, so there's her dress. Do you see how vibrant it looks? It's you may not be able to tell as much the, the dimension of the color, but it definitely pops more than the one over here using just the marker. Now the color lifter, 
right here in the crook of her arm, I just kind of went crazy and colored a whole bunch of red in there. So I'm going to use the color lifter just in that area. And it's not going to be perfect, right? But do you see how now you can kind of see where her arm is? It's a little discolored as far as the rest of the white goes. 